Welcome to our Hope Christian Church Melbourne online service. My name is Nigel and I'm your host today. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We are a one-to-one movement transformed by the love of God and have a desire to impact our generation. If you would like to find out more about our church, please visit our website, hopemelbourne.com. I'm not sure about you, but for me, this year has really flown by to think that we're in November already. One thought did come to my mind. How does God, who is actually outside of time, view the passage of the years? And a thought struck me. We don't really note down the passing of the years. But one thing that we do do is we take note of special memories or special encounters that we've had. Special things that seem to leave leave an imprint on our mind. In the same way, I believe God looks at encounters that we have with Him. One of the reasons that I enjoy praise and worship so much is that it's an opportunity for us to once again create a special moment or have an encounter with God. Let's welcome Stacy and the team as they lead us into a time of praise and worship. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Why don't we stand up as we praise and worship our Lord together? Amen. Lying. 
lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles, and every knee chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him oh. every knee will bow every tongue confess Oh, 
Lord, indeed, we thank you that you are our vision. Lord, may you continually be before us. Lord, that we could fix our eyes and follow your wonderful plan that you have for our lives. Lord, we thank you for this time. And we pray all this in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we'd like to come to a time of communion. If we could ask you to get uh, your biscuit and your cordial, bring the elements together, and I'd just like to share a passage from the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to verse 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. What does it mean to proclaim the Lord's death? To my understanding, it means that we can declare out loud that the wrath of God no longer is upon us. The penalty for sin is no longer upon us. You know, we have a new life. We have a new opportunity to go out and live the way the Lord wants us to because we are now under his covenant of grace. The penalty of the law has been dealt with. Now we can proclaim we are living under the grace of God. If you have your elements, why don't we partake them together? Lord, we thank you. Lord, that we can come together at your table and as we proclaim your death, at the same time we are also acknowledging we have a new life by your grace. We thank you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Hey guys, we're from Hope Frankston and we want to thank God with some testimonies of the many awesome things he's done during this time. I want to praise God and thank him for healing my back. I injured it from sitting too long for work and now it's healed. I just want to thank God that I was um, healed from a headache. I got tested for COVID and came back negative and I've now found out what has caused the headache. 
I thank God for uh, the opportunity to grow in my anger management uh, through His Word. I just want to thank God for the awareness of His presence during this time. I've been living in a regional area with family and I've been seeing echidnas pop up in different places and I just feel like it's God saying saying it's He's here. I really want to thank God for my church community and my life group. I've really um, felt able to stay connected with them during this time. And as I've had various health challenges during the year, I'm so thankful to have everyone praying for me. I wanted to thank God for um, better sleep. I've been having trouble with sleep for the past two months and the last two weeks um, were even worse. I've been waking up at 3.30 or 4 every day. So that really affects um, my energy level um, during work. Um, but the last two days I've been able to sleep until 5.30. So thank God for that. I just want to thank God that the knee I hyperextended the other week is healed and that my twisted ankle is on the heel as well. I just want to thank God that um, for the opportunity of a new job, even in these difficult times. I just want to thank God for His healing hands. I have been uh, struggling with migraine for the last 17 years and uh, He has um, blessed me and, and through many prayers um, that my uh, church has been praying for me, I have not have to use the um, medications to uh, manage my pain anymore. Um, so yeah, thank God for that. Um, I am currently doing my grad year as a nurse and I've just rotated to the emergency department. Um, so a few weeks ago I asked the life group to pray for me to have a really good transition and I have had a really great transition. All of the staff have been so supportive, um, including all the doctors and other nurses and just everyone has been really amazing. So yeah, praise God. For me, um, actually my company was a bit worried when we went into lockdown whether how, how we'd go. In fact, we've, uh, we've put on four new programmers during this time. Um, so it's been just amazing. And uh, as well as that, I've learned new ways of uh, leading worship. So it's been wonderful. What an amazing testimony from our Frankston Life Group. You know, I always love to hear testimonies because it really shows how real God is in our own personal lives. If you'd like to be connected to one of our life groups, please feel free to register your name on our website at hopemelbourne.com. We'd also like to take this opportunity to give of our tithes and offerings as a token of our thankfulness to Him. You can see the account details on the screen right now. Now I'd like to invite my friend Freddy just to give a short announcement about Word for Life classes that are upcoming. Hi Church, my name is Freddy. By the end of 2020, we would have covered 18 sermons on the life of Peter and how Holy Spirit transformed Peter. Would you like to learn more about the Holy Spirit? Would you like to learn more about the Bible, the world behind the scriptures, the history, the cultural? Would you like to learn more how the Bible was written with the Greek language, the, the literary styles, the different structures found in the scriptures? I want to invite you to join Pastor Ian and myself as we are conducting an online Bible study class starting on the 18th of November. You can sign up from our HOPE website at hopemelbourne.com. Hope to see you there. Take care. Thank you, Freddy. I myself over the years have been really encouraged through attending Word for Life classes. They really helped give uh, practical wisdom in how to live my life in a better way. And I've really seen a lot of um, blessings overflow as a result. Now we come to a special time of the service where we get to hear the message from the Word of God, the Bible. I'd like to invite my dear friend, Pastor Matthew, to come share the message with us. God is calling us to arise, 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 and take our place. Arise, as God is refining the hearts of His people. Answer the call. God is knocking. 
God is knocking on the doors of our hearts in this time. He's refining our hearts to raise a generation of authentic disciples. That when all of this has passed away, maybe 20, 30 years later, we can look back and say that, wow, those days were rough, those days were tough, but I kept my faith. I fought the good fight. Good morning all. I trust that you are all enjoying the newfound freedom coming out from stage 4 lockdown and making use of the opportunity and, and also the good weather to meet up with friends and to catch up with family. Now this week I took my wife out for her birthday lunch and uh, we, we really enjoyed the time together and the couple's downtime in, in the restaurant, uh, nice food. And uh, the head waiter in the restaurant just keep on circling around us and every now and then just coming and ask us about this, about that. And I just realized that we have been in the lockdown for such a long time, many, many months. And everyone is just just eager and longing for the interaction. So, so I, I was okay with that. And, and I think all of us are the same, that, uh, that uh, we are longing to catch up with friends and the family and also people in the church. So I just want to encourage us to take this time for all of us to make use of this time to, to just uh, go and meet up with someone, encourage someone, add value to someone. Now Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 talks about do not uh, give up the opportunity to meeting one another and to, to meeting again and to continue to encourage one another. And I just want to encourage us to, to do that. And there might be someone out there just waiting for, for a time to meet up with you and uh, you may be the answer to their prayer that you bring their encouragement, you bring them hope and joy. Uh, on the church front, uh, we are getting the team and the venue ready for our on-site service as well. That our worship team has been recording uh, their worship sessions separately from home and now it's time that we're going to pull all the team together to back on Notting Hill and to do the worship session from Notting Hill. And we are getting the, the, the place ready as well uh, to be able to have all those uh, equipment set up and technical aspect to be worked out so that we can be ready to have live streaming as well, especially catering for those who are not quite ready to come back on site yet. And we are dealing with and getting clarification with the government to make sure that we, we follow the COVID safe uh, management plan, that we're able to do the right thing to create a safe environment for all of you. And more importantly, we are also taking steps to make sure our volunteers are spiritually and are mentally ready to ease, ease in into this uh, new normal. So we are taking steps, church, to be able to uh, uh, reach that milestone where we can come back together on site again. So we will keep you posted on our progress and uh, we will surely keep you all well informed about that. And... Uh, I just want to take this opportunity, opportunity also just to, to say a big thank you to those that have been do, uh, involving and volunteers that are involving in our online uh, service uh, production. I think many of you have put in extra hours, invested many hours, and even stretching yourself out from the comfort zone, facing the camera, facing your own fear, and maybe turning their own living room or garage into the makeshift recording studio. And I know some of you even have invested in new equipment uh, and devices to just to improve the quality. So we just want to say a big thank you to all of you, and we really appreciate you. So why don't we just give them a, a big applause right now, yeah? Amen, amen, praise the Lord. And uh, it's so privileged uh, for me to be able to share the Word of God with you this morning. It has been a while. And this morning, uh, we are resuming the Peter sermon series where we are learning from the life of Peter, how God transformed Peter because we believe transformed people transform others. So we want to see God to help us, to transform us, to disciple us. And this morning, I want to share on the topic of deconstructing prejudices and it's based on the book of Acts chapter 10 and turn your Bible to Acts chapter 10 and we'll go to there soon and I just want to start off with saying that you no, know, we, we all uh, see different cultures and people groups and the skin colors people of different walks of life coming together in the church church is a place where people can find acceptance people can find a place of belonging and everyone is welcome and what a wonderful experience we have 
and we see people reaching out to others and pray and offer hope. And I just want to share with you that whatever we experience today, church, to become a wonderful place of acceptance for all was never the, 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 the norm in the past. No, what we experience today, we owe it to the incident that happened 2,000 years ago in the book of Acts chapter 10. And uh, let's just jump into that passage and let's, let me just paint a picture of, of what uh, the context is about. If you turn to Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to verse 8, it's about this person called Cornelius, have an angelic encounter and ask him to invite Peter to his place. And Cornelius is a Gentile. What is a Gentile? Basically, an outsider, a person that excluded from God's covenant with the Jews. So they are not, they would not know God. They never being accepted because of the, just of the background. But, but the angel said, go and look for Peter because Peter have an answer to what you are seeking. Then in Acts chapter 10, verse 9 to 16, that is where we see Peter have that revelation and where God starts to use Peter and through that revelation, break down that barrier and break down that prejudices that Peter had and even the whole Jewish uh, nation have against the Gentiles. And therefore, the, God, the church of God could able to expand uh, uh, and, and see mission established, churches established everywhere. So I just want to read this in uh, verse 9 of Acts chapter 10. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up to the roof and to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptile. Um, of the earth and birds of the air. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord. Peter replied, I never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the ship was taken back to heaven. So we see this recorded the vision of Peter. And according to the Jewish custom that time, if you want to read more, you can check out Leviticus chapter 11. Certain animals were unclean, and if a Jewish person ate it, it would make that person unclean. So what we see in this particular story, a passage that God was deconstructing Peter's prejudice as a Jew to the Gentiles. And God was using the clean and unclean animals in this encounter as a, as a reference for Peter. And Peter got it eventually to know he's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. Then we see later in Acts chapter 10, verse 17 to 48, the remaining of the Acts chapter 10, the story unfolded where Peter responded to God's instruction and the invitation of Cornelius and went to Caesarea where he preached the gospel to not just Cornelius but the whole of Cornelius' household. And amazingly, they all responded to the gospel and they were saved. Not only that, Holy Spirit showed up. Holy Spirit showed up and, and they were all baptized and they all spoke in tongue. And there was strong manifestation and a confirmation that the conversion was so genuine that God was so pleased and God was in it. That So any doubt in the mind of Peter and his follower about it could it possible that Gentile can come to know God will all be squashed and demolished. So that's the whole story that we see there. And uh, friends, we all want to transform. We all want to be transformed by God. We all want God to transform our life. We all want to experience more of God. We, want all, we all want to be able to understand more of His kingdom, how it operates. And we all want to move more of His power, I believe. That is a desire of many of us. So what can we learn today from this passage and what can we learn from these two main characters, Peter and Cornelius, that their encounters and how is that going to, going to be applied to our own lives? Now this is such a rich uh, passage that there are so many things that I can share. I can take hours, but because of the time limit, that I'm just going to pick up two key important things. I hope that it will put something into your thought that you will consider that and prayerfully ask God to reveal more to you. The first one, through Peter that we learn that we all have a built-in prejudices that God wants to deconstruct if we are going to be effective in His service and to be used by God to understand more of His kingdom. So we all have a built-in prejudices that stop us from seeing the full picture of God and His plan and His will 
Therefore, God wants to help us. And in our journey, as He transformed us, as He discipled us, that He wants to help us to deconstruct some of those prejudices. You know that when we come, become a Christian, when we, we, be, we want to know God, it's not just about learning more about His kingdom. It's also about unlearning a lot of the things that are, are hindering us from being able to understand more about God. The preconcep preconception, the misunderstanding and the filters that we have, all the prejudices and the bias. So we see that Peter here, he was given the keys to the kingdom in Matthew that Jesus said to Peter, I, you have been given the keys of the kingdom. So Peter was given the keys of the kingdom. And I believe one of the key is talking about this, that he used that key of understanding the revelation to unlock the door that was tightly shut to the Gentiles before. But now he opened the door of the kingdom, the church, the salvation, the good news of Jesus Christ to be available to the Gentile. And Cornelius was the very first. In fact, he is the very first Gentile that got saved. So God knew that Peter's prejudice towards the Gentiles would hinder him from doing that. And therefore, God set up this encounter. God set Peter up in order to set him free. Amen? God set him up in order to set him free. Just as Cornelius needed Peter to show him the good news, who this Jesus is and the salvation, Peter needed Cornelius as God's instrument to break down his prejudice. And brothers and sisters and friends, no, you know that, I know that we all have prejudice as well in our life, that we have prejudices and bias that are, are perhaps hindering us from being able to experience God more. And God wants to deconstruct them. God wants to move, remove them so that we can be better effective in His service and we can better experience and understand how God's kingdom operates. And therefore, we can live a better and more fulfilled life because Jesus come to give us a life to the full that He promised us that we were able to live a life that is satisfied. And unless we're able to take away all those filters that stop us from experiencing more, we will live a life that is less satisfied. just want to encourage us that. And I can testify that with my own story that how God helped me to remove my bias. And uh, God had to deal with my prejudice towards rich people. You know that? I grew up in the in the environment where where I observe a lot of rich people that 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 people getting rich through unrighteous means. So there's a lot of bribery, a lot of cheating and lying, and uh, and taking advantage of others. And since young, I have a, a a bias and prejudice against rich people. Every time I see a rich people, I always think that they must they must got their 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 wealth from the unrighteous means. So when I became a Christian, I gravitate towards the kind of teaching. That, 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 that promotes if you are willing to live poorly that you are more holy and, and, and I outrightly reject any teaching that promotes even a hint of prosperity you know, I will assess pastors based on what car they drive you know, where, which holi where, holi where they go for holidays and even what watches they wear and I, I was so judgmental I have this prejudice in me that they have a certain mindset about holy people should, should have certain lifestyle and during that period of time, remember that I was working in the building industry, that I was working on building projects in Gold Coast, Queensland. What a beautiful place. And uh, I was given an opportunity to interact and to work closely with many movers and shakers in the property development sector. And many of them are those with the money, not just money, but have the vision to change the city landscape of Gold Coast, to make Gold Coast the best city in Australia, if not in the world. And, and God brought those connections to me. And amazingly, you know, there they, they are people that sometimes can be tough because they are business people. They, they are like sharks. They will, they will bite each other, they will fight each other. But somehow, I was able to maintain a very, very good relationship with them, working relationship. And, and uh, they were nice to me. And, 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 we, and uh, they liked me. So I realized that God actually put that favor in me, in me with them. But due to my prejudices with the rich people, and the, the, the inclination in my heart and that bend towards the, the dislike of the rich people, that I distance myself and minimize my association with them. And today I look back, I realize that God has given me the, the, the key and the opportunity to be able to, to build relationship and, and perhaps be more opportunistic, perhaps 
to be more uh, overt in my faith, that maybe there's a solution that God can give through me to answer their life crisis. But because due to my prejudice, I did not use that key and open the door. That key that God gave me, I put it in a pocket and remained unused. Only years later, when I, when I came across this book, Couch of Honor by Danny Seal, I read that book. It totally changed and transformed my kingdom understanding about money and, and more specifically about, about wealth and wealthy people. And God was setting me up. He was setting me up to deconstruct my prejudices. A few years later, after I started reading that book and starting to ponder on this, and I enrolled in a Bible college and God wasn't done with me yet. He, was continue, he, he still continued to set up the plan that, so that I can be totally set free. I was enrolled in his Bible college and one of my course mates is, uh, was a multi-millionaire. And he carries such a, an understanding, amazing revelation and heart for the kingdom of God and wanted to use his wealth to establish God's kingdom, not just in Australia, but in Cambodia, in many countries. And I remember there was one special day where we got a guest speaker coming and, and this guest speaker happened to like sports car. So this businessman of mine, this cause me of mine that oh, he just decided to want to bless this speaker by, by bringing him on, on a drive on his sports car. So he and his wife both came and with two different sports cars. So one is Ashton, Aston Martin, uh, the other one is uh, Ferrari. So both of those flashy sports cars parked outside. And that was such a moment that we all have a good time there. Uh, I didn't get the right, but, but at least that, no, that just the, the vibe that it created in, 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 in the college at that time. But the story is that throughout the whole one year in the Bible college with him, and the time together that we spend, we exchange ideas, we exchange revelation, and we pray for one another, and we prophesy over one another. And God was using him to dismantle and to deconstruct my prejudices and, and the lies that I, I, I have believed in since young about certain groups of people. And I gladly say today that I'm set free from that area and I have a, 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 a kingdom understanding of wealth and knowing the purpose of wealth and the importance of wealth in the kingdom of God. And I no longer see those people with a different filter, but I'm able to at least accept them and believe that they have a heart and they need God too. So I, I, I praise God for that. How about you, friends? Are there any prejudices that hinder you from understanding more about God's kingdom and becoming more effective in His service? I just want to encourage you this morning that Holy Spirit is, speak, is speaking, is speaking to us. just want to quickly pray on this point before we move on. Father God, I pray this morning that I thank you for Holy Spirit. I thank you that, oh God, that Lord, just like Peter, He holds the key to the kingdom. Each one of us here, you are giving us the key and the destiny call to open up certain doors that no one else can open. But there are prejudices, there are hindrances, there are bias in us that perhaps will stop us from reaching out to those people, from reaching out the key in our pocket and open up those kingdom doors. And I pray this morning, Holy Spirit, highlight those areas to each one of us here, that we may ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and help us, that we come to this place of humble before you and say, God, I need you. I'm so stuck in my own worldview. I'm so stuck in my own understanding, in my own perspective. I want you to help me to dismantle that bias, that prejudices I have, so that I can step more into the kingdom of God and fulfill what you want me to do. Just like Peter. Father, I just want to thank you for that. May this be a pivotal moment, just like Peter carried that revelation and it became a pivotal moment for the church. And I pray as we, if, as we pray, as we ask you to help us in this aspect, oh God, that this will become a pivotal, pivotal moment in our walk with you, in the way we are used by you in the kingdom of God too. We just want to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's move on. Not just Peter, that we see the second person in the Bible that in this particular passage is Cornelius. And what can we learn from Cornelius? And through Cornelius, I think we learn that people are being are prejudiced against. And, and just like Cornelius, that being a Gentile, never being accepted in that culture. There are people out there that they are being prejudiced against. And, uh, and people that are feeling hurting. And people that are seeking for their unconditional acceptance 
from a loving God, from people around. So Cornelius represents this group of people that Cornelius is a Gentile. No, we see that story say that he was powerful. He became a centurion, that he has a Roman centurion that have hundred soldiers under his command, a powerful man. He was reputable and respected. The Bible says well spoken. He was well spoken of by, by the whole Jewish nation, even the Jewish people. He was a devout and God fearing man. He gave alms generously and he prayed continuously. So you see, he doing all those things. He have that status, he have the reputation, he have the power. He have that uh, 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 holiness in him that really fear God and do the right thing. But yet, something is still missing. Yet, something that's still a void in his heart because he did not know God. Because he was not regarded as someone that able to have a covenant with God. Friends, we all are created with this need, with this desire to be accepted to have a place of belonging, to have that communion with God. We are designed to live with our Maker. We are designed with that need to know our self-worth is not attached to, a, to achievement, to the power, to the reputation, to the, to the respect that people give us, but our sense of value and worth is attached to how God sees us, our Maker. And that is why in each one of us here, either we bury it, we disregard it, but eventually it will come out. Because we all need to know that we, 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 we live with a purpose to know God. And we live with a purpose that to be known by God. You can see in the eyes of those people that are dying, when they have no certainty of where their eternity is hang on, you realize that. You realize that all of us, deep within our heart, when everything being stripped away, in that moment of, of dying, that we realize that we all need God. We all need to know with certainty that we have this covenant, this relationship with God. Cornelius, because of his family of origin, he was set apart not to be, not to be able to have a communion with God. He was prejudiced against. And I'm sure many of us can identify with what Cornelius experienced at that time, that deep down in our heart, we are crying for the acceptance. acceptance. We are crying for the unconditional love from God. We are, we are crying for not to be marginalized, not to be uh, looked down upon. Because deep down in our heart, just like Cornelius, that we have that core needs of wanting to have value and self-worth. And God gave us that. When He created man and woman, He said, I created them in the image of God. That is where our value and our self-worth come from, that we carry the image of God. We are marked by Him. And we all want to be accepted, to belong. The Gentiles can never belong to the, to the church of God at that time. But we all are having a longing to belong to God in that covenant. And when God created us, He said it was very good. That was acceptance. And He put us in the family. He put us in the covenantal people. And that's, that's what we all need in our core, deep core values. That we core need, sorry, that we need. And the thing is that prejudices attack those core needs by devaluing people and separating people according to classes, according to different things and make us devalue, make us feel that we don't belong to the other group. But we're all crying for that belonging. We're all crying for the value as God sees us. And that is why God went through in length to set an encounter for both Peter and Cornelius, and with the aim to break down the huge prejudice between the Jews and the Gentiles. Now we see that in that scripture that God set it up like, First thing, he got an angelic visitation to Cornelius, affirming him that, hey, God really sees you, God wanting to know you. And, and but interestingly, God did not ask the angel to, just to share the gospel and, and to, to Cornelius, but God was asking Cornelius to go and see Peter. And because God was preparing his church through Peter to become the instrument and the voice of acceptance of the one that breaking out that barrier and pulling down, pulling down that wall. And not only God said, the angelic visitation for Cornelius, but God also set up Peter, as we mentioned before, that, that Peter holds the key of the kingdom. And this is one piece of the key. And God knew very much that unless Peter was able to, to demolish and deconstruct that prejudice that he has, and, and that's why in him, because of his family of origin, because of his culture, back, cultural background, and God was using Peter, he was 
taking Peter to that journey of breaking the, that, that, the prejudices in him so that he can take that key out and open that door and open that wide open for the Gentiles. And why God chose Peter also? Because Peter was the most authoritative voice that time among all the 12 apostles, that he was the one that stood up. And he was the one that most willing to take the risk as well. It was a risk for him. It was a risk for the Jewish people in that time to open up their house and to mingle around with the, with the, with the Gentiles, the unclean people. In fact, that time they would call the Gentiles dogs. That's how much they hate and wanting to disassociate with the Gentiles. But Peter was willing to take the risk. And more importantly, God was using Peter, a very unnatural, in fact, almost supernatural candidate compared to Paul. Paul was called to be an apostle to the Gentile. Who else could be a better fit to have their revelation? But interestingly, God used Peter because God wanted to help Peter to overcome that prejudice in him. And uh, then God actually showed that vision to Peter three times and they communicated the importance and, uh, and adamant that God was adamant to want to see that happen. And God gave Peter the wisdom to bring some brothers from Joppa with him. So the whole encounter, the whole breakthrough was witnessed by the people, by, by Peter's uh, companion, his disciples. And, and in those times, the testimony has to be established. Uh, in the witness of two or three. So Peter was able not just to see that himself, but his follower that went with him. Then not to mention there were signs and wonders, the manifestation of the Spirit. Holy Spirit came down and they, they were baptized in the Spirit. They spoke in tongue and that definitely left no room for mistake of a genuine conversion. And God put his stamp of approval of that conversion. You know that God was really pursuing the cause of righting the wrong in human history. God knew that, that you know, when he chose Israel to be the nation representing him, that, that, that God knew that the pride has caused them, the legalism has set into them, and rather than them being set apart to represent God, they set themselves above, thinking they are better than other nations. And God was using his opportunity. It's not that God made a mistake, but God gave that freedom to mankind. But now God saw something is wrong, the cause of it, and he is wanting to right the wrong. And God, therefore, God actually sent Jesus. God sent Jesus, his one and only son, not just to eradicate the problem of sin, but also to bring all people, all mankind, back to God, the, the loving Father God, through the establishment of the new covenant. And God found that cause. And He wants us to be the agent of that cause, of that cause where we see around, when we see injustice today in the world, and when we see that the prejudice and the bias of people are causing certain group of people to be disadvantaged, to be cut off from the love of God, we got to act. We got to play our part. Amen? Amen. Yes. I just want to uh, leave you with this verse that, no, how can we know why, how, do, how can we know God, God wants to do that? Because he, he said that in the, in the scripture, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 to 28, that Jesus is answered. Jesus is the very reason God, God did that. Now, before faith came, in verse 23, Galatians 3, we were held captive under the law, in prison until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardians until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now, the faith has come that we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons and daughters of God through faith. You and me, we are no longer under the guardian, but we are all now, all, we are all now sons and daughters of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized in, into Christ have put on Christ. As we put on Christ, yeah? There is neither Jews nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you all are one in Christ. Did you hear that? There is neither Jews nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you all are one in Christ Jesus. That is basically God's plan. It's just amazing to see that God are not offended by the different opinion and, and the practices in people, even the sin in people. God sees everyone and He has this big heart for everyone. He wants everyone to come to know Him, no matter what background, no matter what family of origin we come from. That there is a place of acceptance, there's a place of belonging. That is what God wants us to be. 
if today you are feeling prejudice against, if today you are feeling the same way like Cornelius, that there's something missing, that I feel like I'm marginalized. I want to share with you the good news is that Jesus came. He died for your sin. He died for you. He died for me. And because of that, we can all be called one people in Christ Jesus. And we are reconciled back to God. I just want to finish with prayer this morning. Father, we just thank you this morning that indeed such an amazing story we hear from Acts chapter 10 of God, the pivotal moment in the church. And not only that, it shows the very reason Jesus came, not just only to re eradicate the problem of sin, but also to bring all mankind to you. And I pray this morning, Lord, you are dismantling. You are dismantling and you are deconstructing the prejudices that, oh God, the churches have towards certain people, maybe the legalism has set in. Lord, you are deconstructing, oh God, Lord, the prejudices and the bias that in the government institution or oh God in the society out there that is causing people to be separated to be isolated we pray this morning Holy Spirit just move through those areas I pray all causes of injustice oh God will come to the surface where Lord your spirit will take your people Lord your spirit will empower people to carry and to identify this is the cause that I'm living for this is the key that God has given to me to take that and to say this is my moment to say God help me deal with me transform me make me to be the people the person like like peter able to embrace the differences and i will take that risk i will launch out to that call of god father i just want to thank you this morning and i pray all this in jesus name amen god bless you thanks pastor matthew for the message today about deconstructing prejudices if you would like to speak to anyone regarding the message we would just like someone to pray with you. Please join the Zoom link that you can see on the screen right now and is also underneath the YouTube description. That's it for this week. Hopefully you'll have a blessed week ahead and look forward to joining you all again. Same time, same place. Bye. <laughs>